Eric? Yes. Uh, you said your name much louder than everything else. Before. Yeah. We can compress that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm from Decatur. Grew up in Decatur. Uh, lived here pretty much my whole life. Yeah. I would say that my biggest influences really are uh, the kind of all the people that I've met like around the Atlanta music scene and just the people that have kind of like grown up watching play Oliver Wood from the Wood Brothers guy I really respect a lot you know as a songwriter and a player and uh, Bill Sheffield Nate Nelson a lot of guys that play on the kind of blues scene I guess I'd say Atlanta has a pretty good scene for that kind of music you know and everyone puts their own stamp on it but it somehow always gets labeled as blues music Sean Costello actually that's another one I definitely should mention but yeah definitely just watching those people there was this weird bar like on Buford Highway this was like right before the that smoking law went into effect where like you couldn't be underage in a bar where they were smoking fuzzies it was called fuzzies so that was a spot I would go see him and uh but yeah, so my my mom actually would uh, was really influential and would take me out. She was really into this kind of music, so she kind of opened the door, I would say. Does she play music? No, she's just a, a lover of, of music. Very cool. She plays some piano, actually. I should say that. Mom, I have great love for your piano abilities. It seems like that kind of music, you know, has resurged in the past 10 years. Not that there was ever a time when people like weren't playing it. And now you can hear banjos being played by Mumford and Sons on uh, like Hot 107.5 or something. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's the wrong station. But hopefully that's the apex and now it'll die. You Why? Know? Why do you say? I mean, so it seems like you it, like Americana music. I do, but I just feel like that is like the bastardization of it kind of it's just like uh it's just all the uh kind of shallow things about it and none of the depth from from what i've heard i mean i uh, not a good critic slow parade is kind of the thing i've been working on the most lately with just getting that record out but uh and y'all are a three piece yeah we actually we played as a Four piece for the for our release show. We had uh, my friend David Kurslis on uh, some keyboards, but I, I think it'll probably continue to be a three piece for a little while. But yeah, I've been doing that a lot lately. Um, I have another band called Midnight Revival that I've been playing with around town for a while, like six, seven years or something. We do a lot of like kind of roots rock, blues, country stuff, and then uh, I also play drums in this band called Gas Hound. Yeah, that's been really fun, you know, just kind of having a new musical approach with a totally new instrument. Gas Hound seems more aggressive than Slow Parade. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a, a kind of material that I haven't really played as much of. Mm -hmm. The primary songwriter for that band, uh, Ben David Al, is into a lot of, you know, like kind of grunge stuff and uh, Queens of the Stone Age and... Which is not stuff that I'm like super familiar with, so it's kind of cool, you know, to just. And you're new. playing drums with that group, right? Yeah, yeah. I've been playing drums for maybe only like two, two or three years. Actually, just to play in that band, really kind of started for that. That's cool. But it's been really fun. I really enjoy doing it. Uh, so where are the bigger production ideas coming from? The spacey ambience, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I think some of it, you know, also comes from uh, older stuff, like 60s stuff, you know, where they're cranking the reverb a lot, like uh, the Simon and Garfunkel stuff, especially the later records where there's like uh, just this huge reverb sound. Just those kind of sounds, I guess I like. So that kind of stuff, but even like going back further, you know, if you listen to like 50s R&B or, you know, blues records, you know, it's just splatty reverb. It's just a 
ton of that, which I really, I really like. But it's also, you know, like newer stuff too, like, uh, I don't know, any, like, flaming lips. I wanted it to be a blend of those things, you know, like some kind of, uh, intimate kind of real space moments, you know, because some of the songs are just acoustic guitar, vocal, and there's even that, uh, kind of traditional John Hurt, uh, cover of a spike driver, spike driver's moan. Right. It was fun making it, you know. There's always, you know, things you go back and change. And it's, it's never perfect, you know, you just pick a time to walk away, the best time to walk away. It was great fun making it, and uh, I always feel super lucky to be able to play with the people that I do, because they're just really talented, and it's awesome. Paul Stevens played uh, drums and a bunch of other stuff on the record. He played some vibraphone and piano and percussion stuff, and then Andrea DeMarcus played bass, uh, upright bass. Chandler Galloway played some keyboards and other stuff. Played some of those drone things on a, the Nord or on the organ. And Damon played the Space Echo oh, cool. beautifully. When did you start putting um, the tambourine on your foot when you play? Oh, uh, Paul Stevens, the drummer, actually made that uh, Toberine. Toberine. Yeah, that one is made out of a uh, clothes hanger, I think, and then just a couple of jingles. But I think he just kind of duct taped it all together. And that's version one, and uh, it's been hanging on. He's now on like version 3.5 or something, but version one is a trooper. Well, he passed it on to me, he passed it on. but it's it's been cool. I, I find that even just adding that little element of percussion can sometimes add a lot when it's just you, yeah. when it's just solo. Well, you you have good timing, so you can handle it. People don't seem to realize that the tambourine's deceptively difficult in that if it's really loud. The timing, everyone's aware. Of it. Yeah. It'll, it'll cut through anything. I've been working on my maraca game, and that's like, same thing. They're so loud. Songwriting is such a mysterious process, but I feel like that's a, a side of the process that I'm trying to uh, engage with more, is just sitting down and saying, I'm going to like work on this now, sure. rather than, because in the past, it's mostly, you know, like I just wait for something to come to me, or, yeah. uh, and then, you know, it, it flows out, and then it's gone, and then, Edit, and, but uh, I don't know. Sometimes waiting for inspiration, I feel like only gets you so far. Actually, I think that's when a lot of the slow parade stuff came out. Was I was living in this house that had a. Uh, it was built, I guess, in the 40s or 50s, and it had like one of these concrete bomb shelter rooms in the basement that was really tiny. I mean, like about the size of this deck, but had this uh, incredible reverberated sound because it's just a you know concrete room oh you play the guitar in there yeah it was incredible to sing in and i've always you know like had roommates and you know you could be in there at like two o'clock in the morning yelling your head off and no one would hear you there's this giant steel door that was like yay thick you couldn't really play in there with other people because it just kind of the sound just turns to mush yeah. yeah but oh it was just my favorite place to sing. Stand alone, hope to keep them at bay. I'm not so proud you got something to say. This ain't no movie scene I've seen before. No, I can't recall what the hell I'm living for The careless was an impatient tongue Hear the violent laugh of the gathering throng The smile comes on early, it fades too soon 
Well, my head is light and I'm a tiny black balloon Something to say, this ain't no movie scene I've seen before No, I can't recall No, I can't recall what the hell I'm living for 